Hi everyone, this is To That Point, a podcast where we cover topics at the intersection of business and culture. I'm Montana Blair. I'm Jasmine Escher. We're back for another episode to discuss the new college experience. Over the next few weeks, we're talking to friends pursuing master's degrees at some of the top universities to better understand why they decided to leave a successful career to go back to school, how the pivot to virtual has impacted their experience, and their take on whether or not a virtual master's degree is worth it. This episode, we're learning how the value of an MBA has changed from someone who started pre-COVID and is now going into their second year remote. Welcome to the show to that point. Today, we're talking to Zina Wakonko, a second year MBA student at the Kellogg School of Management. Zina, welcome. We are so excited to have you. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. And I actually know Azina as a friend and a coworker. I feel like all my network of friends also at some point end up working at the same place that I do. But we actually lived together in Brooklyn a year or two ago. And I very specifically remember you had this giant pile of textbooks in your room. And I instantly got flashbacks to SAT prep and applying to undergrad. And it was my first look at what it takes to go back to school. And like when someone says, oh, I'm going to grad school, like this is what it means. And I don't think I had any idea how difficult it is. So I was so excited to hear that you got accepted into one of your first choice schools and that all the hard work you did paid off. So today... We want to get your take on the MBA and how your experience has been so far. But before we jump in, I'm going to pass it off to Montana for a bit of an icebreaker. Okay, yes, I have uh, just a few quick questions, Vogue style, I guess. So you can just answer with whatever comes to mind. So first one, simple, coffee or tea? As of recently, tea. I've stopped drinking coffee over like this whole COVID thing. (laughs) Wow, that's impressive. I'm jealous. (laughs) I need to get on that train. Okay, so you are traveling. Airbnb or hotel? Uh, Hotel. Are you loyal to like a certain brand or like boutique hotels? Well, I feel like as a former consultant, uh, you kind of hop on that, what's it called? Marriott Bonvoy train. Yeah. I love love Bonvoy, love all the points. So definitely the points hotels. I love how you talk about it like it's past tense. (laughs) You're like, Marriott, maybe that's what it's called. (laughs) Yeah, who knows these days? In the olden times, pre-COVID. Okay, so paperback or Kindle? Paperback. And Spotify or Apple Music? Spotify. Same, good choice. (laughs) (laughs) And then lastly, where are you quarantined? Oh, I don't know if I'd still call it quarantine, but, you know, living in Evanston, Illinois, where which is where Kellogg is located. Awesome. Yeah. And I would love to hear about like the on campus experience as well as we go through this, only because my two younger sisters are in undergrad at UT and we visited them and they're literally just in their rooms for like five or six hours a day, just like on Zoom meetings, like taking notes, submitting homework. It's so different from when I went to school. But in terms of business school and grad school, I think Montana and I are definitely not strangers to the idea. And I think anyone that comes from consulting or is in more of like the business industry has definitely thought about it at some point. (laughs) It's just unavoidable. And I know that you left your job for grad school last year. So to start, can you tell us why you're going to grad school and how you picked the MBA route? Yeah, I guess to preface all of this is I think I'm a nerd at heart and always kind of knew that I wanted to go to grad school. And my dad had gotten his MBA and a couple of my cousins. So I always I knew that was a thing like growing up and that it was something that I was interested in pursuing. It was just kind of a matter of when. And like my experience in undergrad or rather my focus in undergrad kind of like further supported that. Uh, So in undergrad, I was a politics major and I minored in Spanish, which isn't necessarily the most practical like set of studies out there. So then I found myself in like 
consulting. And I realized that a lot of the people around me had taken business classes in undergrad. And so I found myself like learning a lot on the job that some of my peers had studied in classes before. So that was just like further strengthened the reason why I wanted to go to business school. So that's how I decided that about going to business school in terms of picking the MBA specifically. Like I said before, I had known like people in my family had done it before. And so I thought that it was something that was interesting. And just given the career path that I've been on, it made a lot of sense. Was there a point in the decision making process where you critically looked at timing of specifically like, where are you in your career? And when is the right time to go back to school? Because that's something I've heard a lot from folks. It's like, do I go right after undergrad? Do I wait two years, four years? Do I wait for the right title? Mm -hmm. Um, How did you know this was the right time for you to go? Yeah. So I want to be at a point in my career where I had an idea of what I wanted to do in the short term and the long term. So definitely didn't want to go straight out of school because, you know, you're still kind of figuring out like, what is this working world? And like, what what am I doing with my life? Waiting a couple years out of school for me was really helpful to be able to, honestly, it gave me time to like explore areas of interest and get exposed to different industries and gave me the opportunity to think about like what I want to accomplish in the short term and then what I might want to do in the long term so that in thinking about like why I want to go get my MBA, I can like structure my time at Kellogg, I guess, better. I can just better structure my time by focusing on like key interest areas. Got it. And it seems like the decision to go to business school was decided on like pretty easily. You're like, okay, this is a choice that makes sense for me. When it comes to picking a school, how was that? Did you have the same sort of advice from people or same sort of direction? Or is this something that you really dived into by yourself? Yeah. So I did a pre-MBA prep program called MLT. It's for underrepresented minorities that are applying to business school. So that was like a great help to me. I remember the way that I even learned about it was I went to an info session, I guess that must have been 2017 for a school. And I like, I had seen the same people at like several info sessions I'd gone to. And I just went up to them and asked like, are you guys all like, hi, basically introduced myself to them and asked like, what program (laughs) they're with, because it was just strange to like see the same exact same set of people at different programs or at different info sessions. So that program was really helpful in terms of the overall preparation process for thinking about like, what do I want out of school? How do I define my long-term and short-term goals? And like, what school would be the best fit for me? And so that's the program I did. I know I was also like thinking about doing this other program called Forte, which is focused on women. Um, And it provides like a pretty similar type of structure in terms of just understanding like how to approach the MBA application process and like key things to think about as you put together your application. Oh, that's great to know that that exists and is Mm -hmm. out there. Because I've heard the stories of folks just going at it (laughs) by literally just them. And like I mentioned at the start, it like there's so much to consider and so much that goes into this decision. And another huge factor of whether or not you decide to go is also the price tag. Mm -hmm. And I think something that I find very difficult is figuring out how I see the total dollar amount that I would have to invest and say, okay, yes, this is worth it for me. So if you are comfortable answering, how are you funding this degree? Yeah, so loans are a big thing. <laughs> um, right now, degree is funded by loans. And it's obviously like a massive investment. The way to think about it is one, like if you can find an employer that would sponsor you. So for example, Accenture could sponsor you or another. It's often consulting firms. Another consulting firm like offers sponsorship for if you go to business school and then come back for a certain amount of years. And then while that is the case and the firms can do that, you will find that the vast majority of people at school like aren't sponsored. So people kind of just 
accept the financial implications and recognize that your salary will go up. Well, it should go up after, or I hope it goes up <laughs> after you get this MBA and that you'll be able to like pay off loans in a non, non like crazy amount of time afterwards. Right. So the salary bump is great, mm -hmm. right? Like that's definitely one thing you're looking forward to. And I, I feel like as you're learning these new skills and getting to meet folks, you can kind of start to see that value become a bit more tangible. And I know you're going into or just started your second year, but I kind of want to flash back to your first year in the program when things were probably a little bit more normal. And I would love to understand within that first year of you being in this program, how did you start to see that value come to life? And just in general, like what was valuable and perhaps not valuable about the program in your first year? In terms of valuable, I think just like going back to what I said before about being studying politics in undergrad and Spanish and then like working in the business world. So for me, and I, I don't know if everyone that is in grad school with me would agree, but I actually found a lot of the coursework to be really valuable. I like came into school knowing that I wanted to learn about accounting, finance, and like the nuances of marketing and stuff like that. So I really found like the academics valuable. And then additionally, it's been great to like meet so many people from so many different backgrounds with like a very diverse set of interests. I guess that's all to say like the network <laughs> has been valuable. Um, and I think that while obviously COVID threw a wrench in the first year, I still have made like lasting relationships with people that I go to school with who I believe I will like remain to be my friends after graduation. In terms of things that were kind of not valuable, hmm, I like, and maybe I have too rosy a view of like this MBA so far. I don't know. I enjoyed the first year and like while obviously some classes may not have been like my favorite thing to go to, especially because I had a lot of classes at like 830 in the morning. I still was happy to have taken them because I feel like it's information that might be helpful down the line. Yeah. And an argument that I hear from people a lot like myself, for example, I truly enjoyed school. I love learning. I just get bored after a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I really prefer just learning things in like the real world environment where they might happen. Mm -hmm. But I love what you said earlier, where you were like, I met people who were learning things in a classroom that I was having to learn on the job. And sometimes that's a great way to learn it. But I think having the context and knowing in a decision making process or anywhere while you're actually going through it, the way that it could be done, I feel like just helps so much because I've seen at least from folks who are above me, like the sign of a good leader is not someone who knows the right thing to do. It's a person who's able to consider the possibilities and say, let's try this one. So I think having the structure around it from a program like an MBA, where you really are benefiting from the classroom learning, it seems like that's something that you would really be able to realize. Yeah. And there is something just kind of diving off that point for um, the whole idea of like learning by doing and like on the job. It's one thing that, and I think a lot of schools probably offer this, but one thing that has been really cool about being at Kellogg is that there are the opportunities to kind of like mix that in per, like in classroom learning and like hands-on learning by working with like different organizations. For example, before COVID hit, I was going to go to India to work with a startup there on like a consulting project. So it was like pretty open-ended, but still we had like a advisor as, that was a professor. So that would have been like a very cool way to kind of employ what we were learning in the classroom to like real life problems that would have been very valuable for like the organization. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah. I'm I like it sucks you weren't <laughs> able to go, but hopefully <laughs> Yeah. Fingers crossed something happens, maybe it can come into fruition in the future. Yeah. And to that point, so you were just finishing your first year of the program when COVID hit. So it's probably hard to summarize, but how how has that impacted um, your experience going into year two? So COVID hit 
literally like right before my spring break. So that was a pretty big bummer. I don't know. I guess that COVID hitting has obviously made year two to be something that no one could have like foreseen or imagined. I guess taking classes virtually in the spring because Kellogg is on a quarter system as well. So COVID hit at the end of our winter quarter, start of the spring quarter. It just, it gives you a different sense of like how much you can take on in terms of like classes, for example. I feel like people are like joining more clubs or classes or taking on more leadership positions, especially because so many things are virtual and that's the main way to like connect with people across classes, across like the different years and um, throughout the school. I guess that's all to say that year two is shaping up to be busier than year one was, which may be a like a symptom of it just being year two or may actually be because everything's virtual and we just want to stay connected as much as possible. Right. Yeah, we've talked to a few other people who are either starting out their journey in grad school or also having to figure this out midway through. Do you have any advice to them on how you're like staying connected with friends, meeting new people, networking? So I think the friends aspect has been a little bit easier. I think everyone just knows that Zoom is now like a way of life. So people are very open to having like Zoom catch-ups, or we call them like coffee chats, even though obviously there's no coffee (laughs) involved. So I think that's been pretty, that's been fine. And then in terms of like the networking and meeting new people, again, like the coffee chat type of things, one thing that I've been doing, which I've found to be helpful over the span of like the year so far, which for your full disclosure, today was just the first day of full classes, but we had preterm last week, but I've been able to like meet people across classes by just joining different organizations. So one thing that I'm doing at school is I'm like a career peer. So I work with the Career Management Center to help both first years and second years prepare for the recruiting cycle. And so that's been a great way to meet people. And then also taking on leadership positions for a lot of the different clubs at school is also it's definitely a big time commitment, but it's a good way to connect across your class and the younger class. Nice. Yeah, it sounds like you're going to have a really busy year too, for sure. Yeah. How do you feel like Kellogg specifically has handled taking the program remote, especially compared to some of the other grad schools and what you've seen? I really think that Kellogg has done a good job at being remote. I know that some schools have decided to go full remote, but Kellogg is actually hybrid. So for example, tomorrow I have like one class in person. So the whole class is in person. So I think they put us in like this massive auditorium and there's going to be like 30 of us in there. So while I'm sure we'll all be like spaced out a lot. But that's all to say that I think Kellogg is seemingly doing a great job with this whole hybrid thing. And I'm hopeful that we'll be able to continue until the winter quarter, until this quarter ends. I'm doing this hybrid model. And of course, every day day is a new day and you never know what's going to happen in this COVID world. But I'm kind of hopeful that things will continue because the school has actually been offering hybrid classes since July, I think, sometime in July, because there's some summer classes that happen. So, so far, so good. And I hope they're able to keep it up. That's great. Yeah, I've heard from a few friends who are in hybrid programs that they're all really grateful to at least have some of that Mm -hmm. interaction. And it seems to make the, the price tag seem a little bit more worth it versus the fully remote programs. Yeah, for sure. I guess my last question to the point of remote and on campus is just the effect on recruiting. How have you seen companies that normally recruit with Kellogg adapting? So what I've seen in terms of them adapting is obviously everyone is going to be virtual. And well, I guess maybe not obviously, but they're going to be virtual is my understanding. Um, At least that's what everyone understands. Like as of right now, it hasn't been fully solidified, but I don't think anyone is banking on like in-person interviews whenever those roll around. One thing that I think is interesting is that it seems that at least for like some second years recruiting, I know that deadlines have either moved up or it's just kind of a black box in terms of like, is this company going to hire anyone? Like when will they figure out their forecasted headcount for next year? I guess that's all to say it's a mixed bag (laughs) and a lot of confusion across the board in terms of like what companies are really doing. 
but it seems like the career management center at Kellogg is trying really hard to make it a little less confusing. But of course, again, like the COVID world, you never know <laughs> what's going to happen. But it, it seems like they're doing okay, like given everything. Right. And I wonder too, if this will kind of lead to a burst of entrepreneurship of people who are just like, I don't really want to deal with this or it's not what I thought it would be. So I'm actually going to just take that leap and do something on my own, something that maybe they'd been thinking about. Yeah, it could. Yeah. And just kind of summarizing all that you've said so far, how do you see the value of an MBA program now that you've been through half of it? You have one year under your belt, you're starting year two, it seems like in pretty good spirits. Um, worth it? Yes? No? Yeah. I mean, I think it's worth it. I don't think I'm just telling myself that because I'm in it right now. I think it the experience has been worth it, especially for someone like with my background who wanted to learn more like the, of the business skills and also just have a lot of opportunities that you don't necessarily have in the working world. Like, for example, you could have like a in semester internship or in one industry for like the fall and then another one for the winter and you can't necessarily like switch jobs like that that easily so for me it's been worth it it is interesting thinking about like how much you're paying in for remote classes so very happy to have the option to be hybrid but yeah so far i think it's been worth it And if you fast forwarded to spring 2021, you have your degree in hand and in your other hand, you have a job offer. Um, Sky's the limit. What would that offer be? Or is it like, do you want to go right back into the working world post MBA? Um, I mean, I think the dream would be to take time (laughs) off to like kind of like decompress and rev up and prepare yourself for going back to like the working world. But I don't know, I'm kind of torn in terms of my like dream job to have in hand. Like on one hand, I could go back to Accenture and that would be like a great, I think it would still be an interesting experience because it's consulting and you can see a lot of different industries or I could go back into tech and I was doing so over the summer, I was a product marketing manager at Facebook. Like I enjoyed that job and think that it could be cool to like do as a full time job. So I'm still kind of weighing out my options. So we shall see what happens in spring 2021. (laughs) Yeah. And always put yourself first. And I think like the gains that you get professionally from an MBA are outlined pretty clearly. But I think how you learn and grow from it personally is something that's very unique and special to you. And I think in general, our generation tends to be a bit more purpose-driven, purpose-led. Like we do fine and we do well succeeding, but I find in a lot of my friends now, they're also trying to find a deeper purpose or meaning and be able to actually give back with the skills that we have and the things that we know. So are there any social causes that you support or is there anything that you're learning in this MBA program that you're hoping to be able to use to kind of contribute in some way to like a larger society or like a larger cultural movement? Yeah, so there definitely is as, and I guess as a precursor to what I'm about to say, in all through undergrad, I was involved with like a lot of nonprofits and have like continued to do so like even while working full time. So one thing that I joined like when coming to Kellogg was this program called Kellogg Board Fellows, which prepares you to be on a board at a nonprofit and also like puts you on a board at an organization. So right now I'm sitting on the board of an organization called Sarah's Circle, which focuses on women's homelessness in Chicago. I probably won't stay in Chicago like post MBA. I plan to go back to New York. So I don't think I'd be able to continue with my role on this nonprofit board, but I hope to be able to come back to New York and join a nonprofit board um, 
if the cause was women's homelessness, I think that's really important and I'd be happy to join that. There's a whole lot of other organizations that I think are also interesting, like one that I think my brother is on the board of this organization actually called Upwardly Global, which focuses on um, preparing immigrants entering the U.S. workforce. So I think that like joining an organization like that would be particularly cool, a cool way of applying the skills that I've learned in my MBA to like the larger society. Yeah. And one thing I've noticed too, that's great in terms of just like a change in the offices that we tend to work in is they're starting to make more space for this. Mm -hmm. And it's not crazy. It's not like one volunteer volunteer day a year where it's like, okay, you can give back. It's starting to get woven more into the daily, weekly, monthly routine, which I think is fantastic. (laughs) And it definitely makes me feel like what I'm doing matters. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Okay, last question for you. This is actually for our listeners. What would you tell others looking into an MBA right now? What pops in my head at first is like obviously 2019, who would have known wasn't the best year to get your MBA because there's going to be a pandemic that hit. So hopefully there's no pandemic that's going to hit or the pandemic will be over (laughs) by the time someone else, like people applying now or thinking about applying get to school. So just consider world events. And then also like think seriously about what your goals are in terms of like, how would this MBA actually help you in the short term and in the long term? A lot of people do very well without having getting an MBA. So it's not something you necessarily need to have. And of course, there's a lot of like financial responsibility that comes along with getting one. So make sure that in pursuing an MBA, you're clear about what you want to get out of it. So essentially, so you don't regret your time there and you can make the most out of it. That's great advice. And I guess one follow-up question to that is how long did it take for you to decide you were going to get an MBA, study for exams, apply, get accepted? Like if I wanted to go get an MBA and I started in September 2020, am I looking at September 2021? You could. It could be 2021. You just have to be very diligent about like the application process. I definitely was not <laughs> very diligent. <laughs> I took the GMAT a couple times and it was it's just so, it like took a lot out of me every time I took it. So I would like take it and then be like, I don't want to take that again. And then the next year would roll, roll around and be like, I'll give it another shot, <laughs> which like you I do not recommend because it just drags the process like way out. But you definitely could like bang it all out pretty quickly if you're just very like focused. So if you were to look like start applying or thinking about applying now, ideally you would work towards the round two deadlines, which happen in January. And then you would find out if you got an interview or you were accepted by the springtime. So you could technically go to school by like 2021. But from what I've seen, a lot of people that would like start thinking about it now take a little more time to like prepare for studying and writing the essays and figuring out who you want to be your recommenders. So would likely end up being a part of like the class that starts in 2022. Got it. Makes sense. Yeah, there is so much (laughs) that goes into it. I'm sure the list just keeps growing and growing as soon as you get started. But you did it, which is incredibly inspirational. So kudos to you. We are so excited to hear how the rest of your year goes. I'm particularly (laughs) curious because using your own words, like your MBA experience has been very rosy and it seems like it's totally working in your favor. And I, for me, like the combination of winter with anything just always ends up being a downer, (laughs) but. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, winters in Chicago, like are not a joke. So yeah, (laughs) we'll see how I feel in the winter time. Yeah. But the point of like being remote is you don't have to trudge through snow to get to your classes if you don't want to, hopefully do it with like a heated blanket (laughs) around your shoulders. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us today. We learned a ton. I'm probably going to start Googling MBA programs again (laughs) after this because I literally always teeter back and forth. But this was incredibly insightful. And again, so proud of you for 
going forth and doing the damn thing. <laughs> so you go, girl. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks for tuning in. To That Point is created and produced by us, Montana and Jasmine. Big thanks to Levi Barry for the audio engineering and editing. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, leave a review, and follow along on Instagram at To That Point. See you soon.